Regarding quality 12, what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth is demonstrated by actions, supported by evidence, scientific, emotional, physical and spiritual, mm. look like in my personal life? Well, firstly, probably the biggest thing it means is that I will always be looking for supporting evidence <laughs> <laughs> for any truth or belief system that I have. I will not just assume that I have all the evidence. And I would be very honest about the evidence. So, so if, I, if I examine the evidence, so if I say, okay, science must support my opinion. Emotions must support my opinion. Mm -hmm. Logic must support my opinion. Mm -hmm. And the actions, once a person engages those three things, must also support my opinion of what the divine truth is. Yep. So I, wouldn't, I, I would be in this phase where I'm always looking to see whether the evidence supports my current opinion of what is true, yeah. rather than trying to reject the evidence automatically. Yeah. So the majority of people, religiously, for example, wish to reject evidence automatically. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no assimilation of evidence. And, and this is the problem. This is why most scientific people are not religious, because they can see the rejection of evidence and the scientific people want to accept the evidence. Or at least examine or evidence. Or at least examine the evidence. Yeah. And so uh, this is why many scientists are not religious. Uh, and it's unfortunate because there are, there are many things that support religion uh, evidence-wise, uh, support the, the belief in a God, for example, evidence-wise. Yeah. But unfortunately, because a lot of the times we are not looking at the evidence we then have a tendency to lump a whole belief system in with the group of people who weren't looking at the evidence. So, mm -hmm. so for example, a scientist then looks at religion and goes, oh, yeah, I can dismiss all of that because the people that are there haven't accepted this scientific principle. And the religious people can go, yeah, I can just ignore a lot of science because that particular scientific principle was not supported by my, you know, my love-based analysis, mm -hmm. right? Both, era, both points of view are incorrect yeah. because we're not examining all the evidence. Remember, all the evidence includes the spiritual evidence and the emotional evidence and the physical evidence. Anything that's scientific needs to be included in all of those things. So, and, and also the evidence of what the outcome is, what the actions are and the outcome that is from following that belief system. And if we truly looked at the evidence we would change many beliefs as a result of that, Yeah. many of our personal beliefs. So, for example, if I did it from a, just from the perspective of war, who have been the people mostly involved in war historically? Well, it's mostly <laughs> the religious nations. <laughs> what does this tell me? It tells me that there is no evidence to support that their religion promotes love. Yeah. None whatsoever. Now, there are some religions on the earth that haven't been involved in war. Therefore, I see them as going, well, there's evidence here to support the fact that love, mm -hmm. they are acting in harmony with love. There's evidence to support that. Yeah. But, but for the people who've gone to war who still say they're a member of a Christian faith or a Muslim faith or you know, any other faith for that matter, Buddhist or any other, and they've still gone to war, there's no evidence to support that their belief is true. Yeah. They need to deal with their belief. It's obviously out of harmony with God's laws of love. Yeah. Obviously. And if I looked at the evidence, just that one little bit of evidence about religion, I would have a lot more questions about religion mm. as a result of looking at that one piece of evidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right. So uh, if I just talk through some of the sure. other notes you've got here. Sure. Okay. So. A soul-based understanding of this truth would mean that I understand that evidence will come from internal and external sources. sources. When we say internal and external, we're talking about personal truth versus universal truth. So what we're going to say, what we're saying here is that evidence will come from the external universe, external to myself, mm -hmm. and will also come through my own personal experience. Yep. Both. And it has to engage both. So evidence for divine truth. For whatever is God's truth. Yep. For whatever is God's absolute truth, there will be evidence universally and there will be evidence personally. Mm -hmm. 
my experience will add to the evidence, my personal experience will add to the evidence. I can't say that it can be one or the other. There is going to be both, because remember, this particular truth requires that there's both. Personal and universal needs to be incorporated together so that we can understand truth. Mm. Yep. Mm. Okay. So it, it's a requirement that there has to be both. Yeah. Yep. I do not hold on to beliefs that are not supported by evidence. Exactly. So whenever there is a belief system that I have that there is no evidence to support, I put that belief in the yet-to-be-resolved basket. <laughs> <laughs> I might not dismiss it completely, right? I just put it in the yet-to-be-resolved, right? But where there is no physical evidence at all and there has not been none for thousands of years to support a particular belief system, then it's highly likely that I can throw away that belief. Mm -hmm. So I, I might just keep it there, just, just with an open mind that I might discover something about that in the future. But, and so therefore I won't completely dismiss. Yep. But if all of the evidence points to dismissing it, then I would not definitely retain it as part of my practice. Yes. I would definitely not do it. I would not act upon it. Yes. If also that particular belief didn't support love, I know that I can throw it out straight away. Yeah. So, so if you believe, for example, that you should be able to go to war under some conditions, out of harmony with love, throw it away. It's yeah. a false belief. Yeah. God doesn't believe that. Yep. God believes instead that, it's, that there are no conditions under which you should go to war. <laughs> All right. Uh, Soul-based understanding of this truth would mean that I experiment with beliefs, and you've just touched on this, mm -hmm. that have yet to be supported by evidence. Yes. That is, I search for potential evidence rather than dismissing something without reason. Exactly. So, so while I also don't absorb something without reason, yeah. I also don't dismiss something without reason. Uh, we see this happening a lot on the planet where we dismiss things without any good reason, mm. right? only to find years later or centuries later somebody discovers there was a truth in it yeah. and we've dismissed it for centuries in many cases. So, you know. so, for example, the whole concept that the earth was flat or the earth was round, yeah. you know, yeah. dismissed the earth was round, dismissed without reason. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then years later, centuries later, somebody circumnavigates the earth and brings back evidence that in fact they didn't fall off the edge of the square earth <laughs> or the flat earth yeah. and therefore there is now evidence um, to support it. But most people fought against that evidence even yes. initially, yeah. which is an indication that they weren't truly open-minded with regard to the evidence. Yeah. So, so we neither accept nor deny evidence. Like, we have an open mind of the evidence. So if there's something internally that we have not yet determined as being God's truth, instead of dismissing it as a concept or an idea, we look for supporting evidence and we look for denying evidence. Yeah, so we're very... We're, and by now we're up to the 12th <clears throat> quality of mm -hmm. divine truth, aren't we? So we actually have a lot of ways to analyse any situation or any, exactly. anything that's being proposed as a truth, don't exactly. we? Exactly. We have a lot of ways of saying, okay, I'm not going to just j leap to believing this or leap to dismissing it. Exactly. I can actually analyse this, this truth or this situation. With a lot of, there's a lot of ways I can ascertain whether it's actually worth acting on or believing in or dismissing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's the beauty of all of these qualities is they help you determine God's truth. Yes. You know, so far we've discussed 13 of them, isn't it? This is quality this is 12. Th this is quality 12, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so far we've discussed 12 of them. And, and yes, we have great evidence to support already what might be truth and what might not be, yeah. right? But with this particular quality, what we do is we're always looking for evidence yep. as well. So all of those other qualities will help us to determine what evidence we have. Yeah. But, but this particular quality says, I'm going to be open. I'm mm -hmm. going to be open to evidence. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be open to new evidence contrary to what I currently believe and I'll be open to new evidence supporting what I currently believe. Yes. 
I'll be open to new evidence all the time because a person who does so is being scientific, logical and emotionally stable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that's why, what we would choose to do. Yeah, and, and this in now in your list you begin to personalise it a bit. Um, so having this understanding would mean that I demonstrate the principles of divine truth by acting in harmony with divine love. Exactly. So once I discover God's truths and I truly feel them, mm -hmm. I will be motivated automatically to act in harmony with love because all of the truths are harmonious with love. Yep. So if I'm not acting in harmony with love, that is evidence that the truth is yet to hit my soul. Yes. The truth is yet to enter me. It's yet to be a part of what I really believe. Yeah. When it's a part of what I truly believe, love will always be the outcome. I'll become more loving by accepting that new truth. Mm -hmm. Whatever that new truth is, it can be physical in nature, moral, spiritual in nature, what, whatever it is, scientific in nature, it can be any of these things yet I will still become more loving by putting it into practice. Yeah. yeah. Not, not less loving. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, even when I'm judged by others negatively, I still speak the truth and live in love. Yes. So even when somebody judges me or attacks me or wants to make my life more difficult, because I honour the evidence that's already been pro pro given to me that if I have everything, all of the truths are in harmony with love. I, that means I must act in harmony with love mm -hmm. in this situation. Mm -hmm. If I'm acting in harmony with love in the situation, then of course the outcome is going to be that there is more love available and therefore more truth available to everyone who's in present. In this situation, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I will always give truth with full understanding and compassion. Yes, so this is about my sharing of truth. I wouldn't share the truth with somebody while I'm unloving at the time. Mm. So I won't be yelling and screaming at somebody, telling them they've got to accept that truth. I would understand that love is a part of this truth being in my soul. Yeah. So I can't demand that another person accept it. I can't expect they accept it. I can just share it. Yeah. I wouldn't even try to overcome their will. If they said to me, I don't want to hear it, then you don't have to engage the, the person at all mm -hmm. because I I would choose to live in harmony with the love that I understand that truth is always about. Truth and love are always this, in this harmonious existence with each other. And I would understand that. Mm -hmm. So my understanding of that would mean that I wouldn't pr even force evidence upon another yeah. once I understood it myself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I never give truth when I am in a state of anger, judgment, condescension or ridicule of others, which yes. is really just the flip side of what you just said. Exactly. It? So whenever I know that I'm being unloving, I wouldn't choose to dish out the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand that my very being unloving means that I am not in a state of truth. And I would understand also this, this truth is, divine truth is, is demonstrated by actions and supported by evidence. So I would know, wouldn't I, that there's no way I can say a truth because divine truth, when I'm angry or upset or um, demanding, mm -hmm. because divine truth is demonstrated by actions, actions. <laughs> and supported by emotional evidence. So, And if you were really in harmony with what you believe, you, yeah. your actions would be showing that you're a much more loving person than you're currently being. <laughs> exactly. So you'd know, oh, hang on, I'm not. Yeah, so I can't even would, say a truth because I don't have it. So what I'm you would angry. do is you say, look, this is what I believe the truth to be, yeah. but I don't yet feel it. Yeah. Because obviously I'm angry. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, so yeah. there's a reason why I'm angry. There's another truth I need to discover here. Discover, yeah. Okay. I never give truth in order to prevent my own emotional experience or avoid my own emotions. Exactly. So, so this is a very similar part. I never yeah. share the truth with someone else to try to modify their behaviour so that I don't have to feel something mm. from them. And I also don't avoid the truth, avoid sharing the truth for the same reason, yeah. right? Yeah. I also don't avoid internalising the truth for both reasons. In other words, I don't avoid internalising truth because I want to avoid some kind of negative experience of my own yeah. or avoid internalising truth because I want to try to avoid the negative experience of another. Yeah, yeah. I, I would always act in harmony with love with regard yeah. to all of those yeah. 
methods of dealing with the truth. And there's so much in everything, in every quality, in every, yes. on every yeah. single thing, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. you know, we can't. We, we obviously want to discuss it. Then, of course, later on we can discuss. There's there's hours of presentations we can give on each one of these yes. truths. And in fact, part of why we're presenting these things this way is so that when we go to do a question and answer, answer session or something somewhere, so that people can actually ask more about what we've presented. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this is like the establishment of a discussion. Yes. Answering some basic questions about how we can determine truth, yeah. God's truth, what the truth of the universe is, what is divine truth and how do we determine it. These are the ways that we determine it. But we need to understand that every one of these discussions has a lot of things that we could mention yeah. and, and a lot of very fascinating areas of discovery as well yeah. for the average person if they actually work through the issues with more detail. Certainly, and it was the single statements you're making here are potentially months worth of self-analysis and emotional work, aren't exactly. they? Exactly, yeah. they are. Okay, next one. I recognise that the principles of divine truth have direct impact on every area of my life. Yes, so this is a part of, it makes sense that if mm -hmm. we're living in a universe that God created and we're discovering divine truths, in other words, all the laws surrounding how God created the universe, it would make sense that we're living in the universe. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's going to have some personal <laughs> effect on us. Uh, yeah, and if it's all, if there's scientific, emotional, physical, spiritual evidence for divine truth, then that's, that's every aspect of our life, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. So it's going, to have a, it's going to have an effect on every aspect of our life. We yeah. can't avoid it. The fact that we're living in God's universe means that we cannot avoid any of God's truths yeah. in the long run. We will eventually discover them all. Which is kind of awesome, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. I lovingly accept all of the counsel I received through God's laws showing me my soul condition. Yes, so we see the operation of God's truths or God's laws as a loving expression from God to ourselves. We don't see them as something we've got to rebel against or, or, or hate. Mm -hmm. We see that uh, actually God loves us and cares for us, so therefore this law has to have a loving basis. Mm. Mm. I desire divine truth in all situations and never reject a situation's ability to teach me love. Yes, so if I've attracted a situation into my personal life and I understand that the laws govern attraction, mm -hmm. then I understand that there's something I need to learn here generally. Yeah. That I, particularly if the outcome has been painful or mm -hmm. the experience has resulted in my suffering, there's definitely something that I need to learn yeah. from these particular experiences. Yeah. And so I wouldn't reject the learning from any yeah. of these experiences. I wouldn't say, oh, well, that's that pro their problem or that person decided to do that or, you know, the reason why that happened is because that person over there. I would see that because I'm personally involved, there's got to be something inside of me that I can learn about yeah. with regard to what is happening here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I desire to know God's truth on all matters and love the process of learning divine truth. Yes, yeah, so instead of hating discovery of new truth, instead of resisting the discovery of new truth, I go, I want to know everything God knows. <laughs> now, I know that it's going to be a physical impossibility, being the fact that God's, God's universe is infinite, God's probably the same, infinite, mm -hmm. and therefore and we're just a, a finite being in an infinite universe. Obviously, discovering them all is going to take time and, and, and effort. But... I would want to engage that process. I wouldn't resist the process. I wouldn't say that ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would want to discover more and more about God's truth because I understood that every new truth I discover is going to result in more happiness and more freedom for me. Yeah. So, so why wouldn't I want to? Yeah. It makes no sense to not, you know, it makes no sense to try to avoid the discovery of new truth. Yeah. No sense whatsoever. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, that wraps up quality 12, which was um, divine truth is demonstrated by actions, supported by evidence, scientific, emotional, physical and spiritual. Excellent. Yeah.